talking about diversity, um, um, we have heard most of the men speaking now. So actually now I have a question for Lorelei uh, and it's actually exactly about this. So we have a question that we got from STEM and it is about um, how we can avoid having too much bias within, because we're building this and so we can have bias within the common stack. So I'll just read a bit of the question here. Um, so where, when quite large groups of people, um, such as women that represent 51% of the population are sometimes underrepresented. I'd like to know what you think about that and if you have already thought on ways to increase the diversity in the community. This is important also in the context of the commons and so on. So how do you, how do you see this? It's a great question that I've thought a lot about. Um, and I don't know, I, I've seen many projects and even like, you know, even governing bodies and like all types of entities um, in our world these days really focus on this like diversity um, topic and really like looking at it from an angle of like, how can we get the people at the table? We just want to have their voices, you know, at the table and included and, um, in some ways, I, I think people's efforts to do that often end up being just like the checking of a box. Um, and so for me, like, I'm really thinking about um, less about how do we like pull those people to our table and more about how do we like, how do we open up a chair? Um, and how do we how do we make that chair comfortable for that person? Um, and you know, if this if this isn't a space that naturally attracts people of of any you know exploited identity group or oppressed identity group, if it's not naturally like attracting that and creating the habitat for that, um, then honestly, like that space doesn't deserve to have those people there. And, um, and always like, the, you know, exploited people's voices are, um, are very often tokenized, right? And, and, and asking people to come and just sit at the table just to be, yeah, yeah. yeah your, your quota. Um, <laughs> and so like for me, I'm like, as a woman in crypto, I'm not like, I'm not out there running around trying to like pull other women into crypto. Like I don't, for me, I don't see that as the best as the best way. And I would rather focus on like, how do we make this a space that's actually, you know, welcoming and inviting and, and, and somewhere where people like that would be valued. I think the other day we were talking about it and I had this analogy of like, okay, if you're like, I want kids and I want to have, you know, 10 children and I want to have a long, happy life with great kids and you know, they all become the president or something. Uh -huh. um, you know, you could you could just adopt 10 kids and like all of a sudden have 10 babies in your house and you're like, there, I did it. And you know, like maybe two of them like die because they fell down the stairs um, because you didn't baby proof the house. But hey, at least you like check the box of you adopted those 10 kids. But like, are you really, um, you know, are you really calling it in? Have you made this environment um, where where that's uh welcome um and so like with that criticism i think there's really tangible ways we can do that um and we've been talking a lot about care work lately um like another term for it is like feminized labor or gendered labor um emotional labor lots of uh you know the type of work that that often gets pushed onto uh women which is like hiring and HR and um, uh, administration and, and all of these types of uh, types of tasks and just and just valuing that more um, and put, putting like a higher importance on that in, in our internal culture. Um, and something I've seen us do really well lately is um, is really valuing a healthy team. Um, and like, I come from conflict resolution uh, systems. I was a sort of justice facilitator and really studied decentralized conflict resolution. And um, 
that's one of the things that uh, like when you show um, by the way you spend your time in a team that it's important to um, yeah like you take the time to have a healthy work environment and sit and talk in conflict with each other and, and interact in a healthy way that's that's one of the things that um, is natural and, and super present in communities of women, of people of color, um, people that aren't just in this super linear, like um, capitalizing, like business world. Uh, I don't know. That's one way we do it, mm. but we're working on it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we all I, are. <laughs> I, I think it's one of those issues that's never going to go away. It's not like, okay, we got that check. Now we can move on to other things. It's something that we continuously need to be thinking about and, uh, and planning for. And I think that's, you know, fits right in with, uh, with the goal of the common stack is, is valuing things that are undervalued, you know, whether those are, are public goods or contributions from uh, underrepresented uh, ethnicities, rate, uh, genders, you know, uh, yeah, I think it, it fits right in with the, with the common stack vision. And it's, uh, I think it's something that's really important to, to everyone working on our team. Yeah, definitely. I think it's also like we have our trusted seed and um, we want really a lot, a very diverse group of experts there. And, and hopefully they, they will keep on giving us lots of feedback so that we can find this balance that is just crucial.